the cervical vertebral maturation method the issue of optimal timing for dentofacial orthopedics is linked intimately to the identification of periods of accelerated growth that can contribute significantly to the correction of skeletal imbalances in the individual patient individual skeletal maturity can be assessed by means of several biological indicators and one among them being the cervical vertebral maturation method the cervical vertebrae are available on the lateral cephalogram that is used routinely for orthodontic diagnosis and treatment planning. This method has been available since the early 1970s when it was developed by Don Lemparski as part of his Master of Science thesis at the University of Pittsburgh. The cervical vertebral maturation method involves six stages of cervical maturation using the lateral head fill and only the bodies of the second, third and fourth cervical vertebrae that is C2, C3 and C4 are considered. So before we delve into the topic of cervical vertebrae maturation, let's first briefly understand the anatomical landmarks of the cervical vertebrae. We shall just focus on the cervical vertebrae second, third and fourth. The second cervical vertebrae is also known as axis or epistrophius. The inferior part is known as inferior articular process. The tail region in the center is the bifid spinous process. And the extensions on the sides is known as the transverse process. In a superior view, cervical vertebrae are labeled as a superior articular facet, which is a depression seen in the superior part of the vertebrae bilaterally. The spinous process and the spinous process is attached to the main body via lamina and in an anterior view it appears roughly triangular with an extension at the top known as dense which fits into the vertebrae overhead the lateral extensions which are the transverse process the inferior border that is the inferior articular process and the main part formed of the body so the cervical vertebrae maturation method involves reading of a lateral cephalogram. So this is an example of a lateral cephalogram. We are concerned with the C2, C3 and C4. So we shall take a closer look at these. So the radiographic interpretations pertaining to the cervical vertebrae are. So here you can see the anterior arch of atlas that is C2. The dense of C2, the extended portion overhead. Posteriorly, on the, on the left side, you can see the posterior arch and the extension, the spinous process. Now, the vertebrae have two surfaces, the superior surface, that is the superior articular process and the inferior articular process. And in the center, there is the articular pillar. The main part of the vertebrae is formed of the body. So the vertebrae are radio opaque and in between the vertebrae you can see radiolucent region that are the intervertebral discs and a slightly radio opaque outline which you can see anterior to the vertebrae that is the soft tissue contour. Okay now coming back to cervical vertebrae maturation method. Two morphologic characteristics are monitored in this method. The first of which is the presence or absence of a notch or indentation on the inferior border of each of the three vertebral bodies that is C2, C3 and C4. And the second feature is the shape of the third and fourth cervical bodies that is just shape of the C3 and C4 bodies which change from trapezoid to rectangular horizontal to square and then finally to rectangular vertical. Accordingly CVM has been divided into six stages. In the first cervical stage, that is CS1, the inferior borders of the vertebral bodies C2 to C4, that is both C2, C3 and C4, are flat or it can sometimes be slightly convex. A notch might be present of at least 1 mm in depth at the center of the notching. The third and fourth cervical bodies are trapezoidal in morphology, assuming the shape of a typical wedge of cheese with the posterior border of the vertebral body taller than the anterior border and the superior surface sloping forward and downward. On the left side of the lateral cephalogram, you can see a diagrammatic representation of how the vertebral bodies uh, would appear on the cephalogram. This stage occurs from approximately the time of the eruption of the 
the deciduous second dentition until about two years before the peak in skeletal growth. Maximum skeletal adaptations occur in the midfacial region during this stage as the sutures are more open in the younger patient. Less skeletal and greater dentoalveolar adaptations are noted when rapid maxillary expansion is combined with myofunctional therapy during later stages. 100% of pubertal growth remains in the first cervical stage. The second cervical stage is the stage of acceleration. The second cervical stage, that is CS2, is characterized by a notch present along the inferior border of the second cervical vertebrae, that is the odontoid process. The lower borders of C3 and C4 vertebral bodies remain flat. Usually, both C3 and C4 retain a trapezoidal shape. Again, the wedge of cheese appearance is seen. And the second cervical stage is considered to be the get ready stage because the peak interval of mandibular growth should begin within one year after this stage is evident. 65% to 85% of pubertal growth remains by the end of this stage. The third cervical stage corresponds to the period of transition. It is characterized by notching of the inferior borders of C2 and C3, whereas C4 remains flat. At least one of either C3 or C4 bodies, they would still retain their trapezoidal shape and the other one would assume a rectangular horizontal shape. At this stage, the maximum craniofacial growth velocity is anticipated. 25-65% to 65 of pubertal growth remains. Fourth cervical stage is, is the stage of deacceleration. All the three bodies, C2, C3 and C4, have notches along the inferior bodies. Both the vertebral bodies, C3 and C4, have a rectangular horizontal shape rather than a trapezoidal shape. So this stage corresponds to the shape of a bar of soap because the bodies of both C3 and C4, they, they assume the shape of a bar of soap. During this stage, continued craniofacial growth can be anticipated but at a lesser rate as compared to the third cervical stage. 10 to 25% of pubertal growth remains. Fifth cervical stage is the stage of maturation. All the three cervical bodies, C2, C3 and C4, have notches on their inferior surface. The bodies of C3 and C4 become square in shape. And at this stage, the vertebral bodies assume the shape of a marshmallow. When this stage is reached, most substantial craniofacial growth has been achieved. The patient can be evaluated by, for corrective jaw surgery or the placement of endocious implants in the aesthetic region. 5 to 10% of pubertal growth remains by the end of this stage. And the last stage, the sixth cervical stage, that is the stage of completion. It is the most difficult stage to determine. Deep concavities are observed on the second, third, and fourth cervical vertebrae. At least one of the third and the fourth cervical bodies has assumed a rectangular vertical morphology. In addition, the cortical bone appears better delineated in the sixth stage than the fifth cervical stage and pubertal growth is completed by this stage. So this is a comparison in the shape of C2, C3 and C4 through the CVM stages. In the first stage, the shape of C C3 and C4 is trapezoid. This trapezoid shape is the least mature form of the vertebrae then the shape goes on to become rectangular horizontal by the third stage and the fourth stage whereas by the fifth stage the shape becomes square and lastly in the sixth stage the shape of the body of c3 and c4 becomes rectangular in a vertical direction and this shape is typical of adult life so what are the advantages of cvm method why should we use this method the cervical vertebrae are available on the lateral cephalogram that is used routinely for orthodontic diagnosis and treatment planning. The estimation of the shape of cervical vertebrae is quite straightforward. The reproducibility of classifying the stages of CVM is quite high. The method is useful for the anticipation of pubertal peak in mandibular growth and a limited number of vertebral bodies is used to perform the staging that is only C2, C3 and C4 is involved for the method. So now we know the method of CVM. So how are we going to apply it clinically? When class 2 mole occlusion is treated too early, that is when the therapy started at the first stage and completed before the interval of peak velocity in mandibular growth, that is before CS3, then the net difference in supplementary growth of the mandible ranges between 0.4 millimeters 
to 1.8 millimeters. On the contrary, when intervention in a class 2 patient includes the CS3 to CS4 interval, that is the interval of growth spurt, then the net supplementary growth of the mandible ranges from 2.4 millimeters to 4.7 millimeters. So according to this data, treatment for skeletal class 2 should be done at the growth peak CS3 to CS4. Treatment timing for class 3 malocclusions. Prepubertal orthopedic treatment of class 3 malocclusion is effective both in the maxilla, which shows a supplementary growth of about 2 mm, and in the mandible, showing a growth restriction of about 3.5 mm. Whereas the treatment of class 3 malocclusion at puberty is effective at the mandibular level only, resulting in a restriction of mandibular growth by about 4.5 mm. Hence, skeletal class 3 should be treated before the growth peak, that is, at the stage of CS1 or CS2, that is, the first or the second CVM stage. So, this was all about the method of cervical vertebrae maturation and its clinical application. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.